by transcription. Several days we'll be celebrating the birthday of Abraham Lincoln, the man who used to split rails. You know, sometimes I think the axe slipped, hit the head of my friend Irma by mistake. You know why I say this? The other night I saw her take a package of ends and paste one on the bottom of a glass. So I said, Irma, what's the idea? And Irma said, Well, the English say bottoms up, I say ends up. <laughs> Yes, Irma has the right idea, because everybody who wants complete protection from odor offense sooner or later ends up with ENDS, America's most popular chlorophyll tablets. E-N-N-D-S, ENDS chlorophyll tablets stop triple O, 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 O. Guard against triple O. Odors of body, odors of breath, odor offense, stop all three all at the same time. Keep you fresh as a daisy all day, all over. It's amazing, but one or two tiny ENDS tablets daily are all you need to stop triple O. Now, ENDS, the really effective chlorophyll tablets, are proud to present your favorite comedy show, created by Cy Howard and starring Marie Wilson as Irma and Kathy Lewis as Jane in... My Friend Irma. <laughs> figure out the dictation I took at work today? Honey, there are two systems of shorthand, the Pittman and the Greg. Why'd you have to invent the third, the Irma Peterson system? <laughs> oh, gee, please help me, Jane. All right, honey, all right. What's this you've written? Dear sir, as your attorney, I wish to advise you that you must pay X. Regret 12 missing bottles. What's the X for? Expenses. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it's pretty close. What is regret 12 missing bottles? Well, I don't know shorthand for we lost the case. <laughs> I think you better take it from here, Irma. All right, Jane. But, gee, sometimes I get so fed up with being a stenographer. Well, honey, that's perfectly normal. Most people would like to change jobs. But you must remember, the grass always looks greener in the other fellow's yard. Well, that's silly. I wouldn't give up stenography to become a gardener. <laughs> I beg your pardon? Oh, Jane, what's the use? There's no escape. Well, there's always marriage. Oh, I'm sorry, I forgot. If you marry Al, you'd just be working under a different name. <laughs> <laughs> you know, honey, maybe you take the wrong approach to work. It's all the same. I've tried the 5th Avenue bus, the 6th no, Avenue bus. No, no, no. No, honey, that's not what I mean. But, Jane, are you satisfied being a secretary? Well, I happen to know that a working girl's only escape is marriage, so I'm content to work, sit, and wait. And wait. And wait. <laughs> and wait. If you get tired of waiting, what do you do, Jane? You pull your hair out, and then you wait, and wait, and wait. <laughs> Well, Jane, I'm not going to wait. I'm going to quit my job the first chance I get. Now, listen, Cookie. Come you in. have no... It's only me, Professor Kropotsky. <laughs> Hello, Jamie and Irma. My two little electric currents. One a live wire, the other with a short circuit. <laughs> Professor. Oh, excuse me, Jenny. A little joke I picked up in the electrical store. <laughs> Girls, I just came down to borrow some smelling salts. Why? Who fainted? Mrs. O'Reilly. I just gave her her rent. <laughs> Gee, that's wonderful, Professor. Did you get a raise? No, no, no. I got a better job. I quit the gypsy tea room, and I'm now playing first fiddle at the Bijou Theater. My professor, that's just wonderful. Well, what's so wonderful about it? A broken down theater, a bunch of hula hula girls is running around wearing practically nothing, and I'm sitting behind the bass drum, I can't see anything. <laughs> <laughs> Only from the expression on the saxophone player's face do I know what's going on. <laughs> So glamorous. Do you call this glamour? No, in the old country, Kropotkin was considered an artist. 
I remember as a little boy, people for miles around would come to snow and slush and stand there shivering, waiting. To hear you play? No, my father sold firewood. <laughs> but, but, but even then, I loved music, and I kept on. And what's the result? Today, I'm at the Bijou. Oh, gee, Professor, I envy you having a glamorous job while I'm just a stenographer. You know, I'm thinking of changing my job. Professor Irma refuses to listen to me. Will you give her a little advice? I'm gladly. Irma, my pigeon, listen to me. Be satisfied. All that glitters is not gold. Yeah, I know that, Professor. How do you know? I had the watch Al gave me appraised. <laughs> no, darling, listen. What I mean is there's a very old saying, look before you leap. But what has that got to do with it? Nothing. This is a saying for broad jumpers. <laughs> <laughs> Goodbye and good luck, girls. I'm on my way to the bijou. You see, Jane, the professor's changing his job. Why can't I? Oh, honey, the professor happens to be a talented musician. What, besides a secretary, could you be? Well, I could be a model, Al says I have nice legs. Oh, I know you have, honey. Uh, you know, I got them from my mother. <laughs> what? Oh, well, they're not my mother's legs, they're mine. Mother has her own. <laughs> <laughs> I think you better stay just where you are and count your blessings. Come in. Hello, Jane. Hi, you chicken. Oh, hello, Al, honey. Oh, are those new shoes? Yeah, made a restaurant buy them for me. They ruined my old ones. Well, how, Al? Stupid way to stumble and drop soup on them. You couldn't wear the old ones because soup fell on them? Well, sure. It shrank all the newspapers in my soul. <laughs> how do I look, chicken? Oh, awfully cute, Al. Yeah, feel good, too. Right in the mood to swing that big deal I'm working on. Oh, no, not another deal. What is it this time, Al, putting stilts on mushrooms and selling them for end tables? <laughs> Nothing so wild. This one can't miss. Putting Mexican jumping beans in pancake flour so the pancakes will turn over by themselves. <laughs> Wonderful. I know he's going to come out on top. Well, I better leave before I blow mine. Goodbye, all. <laughs> Super sensitive day. Oh, gee, Al, I'm so glad you came over. I've been feeling so depressed. Oh, what's depressing you, chicken? Oh, work. Yeah, the word depresses me, too. <laughs> Something wrong? Oh, I'm so tired of my job. It's so monotonous. Oh, well, chicken, it's just temporary. After we're married, we'll go on our honeymoon. Then when we come back... You can look for something else. Oh, no, Al. It's getting on my nerves. Typing for hours and then forgetting to put the paper in the typewriter. And... <laughs> Mailing empty envelopes and then having to mail a postcard saying letter will follow. <laughs> oh, I'm a nervous wreck. Hello? Who is it? Oh, Professor Kropotkin. Anything wrong? Oh, gee, that's too bad. I certainly will right away. Goodbye. What's up, chicken? Well, the professor broke his bow at rehearsal and he wants me to pick up another bow in his room and bring it backstage at the theater. Oh, well, anything for the professor, chicken. Shall we take a taxi or a trolley? Wait, I'll toss a coin. All right, Al. Where's the coin? Chicken, I think we'll have to walk. <laughs> okay, Al, it's only 35 blocks. <laughs> Okay, chicken, here's the stage entrance. Gee, Alice, the first time I've ever been backstage. <laughs> I'm so excited. What a life it must be, and I have to be stuck with an old stenography job. Ah, well, that's life, chicken. Forget it. Now go in and give the professor his bow, and I'll wait out here. Where do you think you're going, sister? Oh, I'm looking for Professor Kropotkin. I want to give him his bow. Shh, not so loud. The show is on. It is? Yeah. The great Cardoni, the magician, is doing his act. Oh, boy, do you mind if I watch? No, no, come on over here and peek out of the wings. Gee, he, he's not very talented. What are you talking about? He's thrown 15 knives at that girl and he hasn't hit her once. <laughs> Shh. Be quiet, will you, sister? Now, they're coming off stage. Well, I've got to bring up the house lights. Sorry, you're going to 
start the kaji. Tell him, must amend the katapatar, the poly. And how many times must I tell you not to scratch your back on my knives in the middle of the act? It don't look classy. <laughs> look, Cardoni, I'm sick and tired of your griping, and I don't like the whole routine. Well, what are you going to do about it? I'll tell you what I'm going to do about it. I'm quitting. You ain't quitting. You're fired. Get out. Get out. Ooh. Hey, Cardoni, what are you going to do for tomorrow night? Who needs a her? I, the great Cardoni, I am the act. Yeah, but who are you going to saw in half tomorrow night? It's not important who I saw in half. Anybody could do it just so long as she thinks fast. Oh, uh, pardon me, but would you give this bow to Professor Kapotkin? Hello, girlie. Who are you with? Oh, I'm not with an act. I'm a stenographer, but I hate it. Well, say, how would you like to be in the show business? Oh, I'd love it, but, but I don't sing or dance. Oh, you don't have to sing or dance. I just want you to let me saw you in half. <laughs> saw me in half? No, thank you. What's wrong? I'd like something more permanent. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, girly, I don't really saw you in half. It's a trick. You get 80 bucks a week on expenses. Think of the glamour. Think of the lights. It ain't every dame can be sawed in half by the great Cardone. Well, I... Look, why don't you come yeah. tomorrow night and see how you like it? All right. Say, you think the kid will be all right? Sure, Sam. I break her in. She'll be great. See you tomorrow at 7, sister. Oh, I'm so excited. Uh, here, will you give this bow to Professor Kapot? Can I want to tell my boyfriend I'm in show business? Oh, Al, Al! What's the matter, chicken? Oh, wonderful things happen. What is it? Al, do you love me? Well, of course I do. Would you still love me if there were two of me? <laughs> what are you talking about? I'm in show business. Tomorrow I'm going to be sawed in half. What do you mean, chicken? I just got a job with the great Cardoni. Is this on the level? Yeah, I got $80 a week in expenses. Pretty high level. <laughs> do you approve, Al? Approve? Why, certainly I approve. I never wanted you to keep that stenography job working for that lawyer client anyway. From now on, chicken, you're on your own. You're going to work for me. <laughs> I'm going to be your manager. My manager? Sure, chicken. And believe me, this is only the start. First, they saw you in half. Then, if you show any ability, they throw knives at you. And then, if you've really got the stuff, they shoot you out of a cannon. And a star is born. <laughs> O, O, O. Guard against triple O. Oh, 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 oh. Let's listen as a man talks to his druggist. Can you give me really effective protection against triple O? Odors of breath, odors of body, and odor of fence. I've never found any old-fashioned deodorant that could take care of all three. Yes, ENDS chlorophyll tablets stop all three at the same time. Stop triple O. It's the new safe and pleasant way to stay fresh as a daisy all over, all day long. But how about these cheaper chewing gum or candy products? They contain chlorophyll, too. But look at any of them. Nowhere does the label state how much chlorophyll it contains. Why, you're right. Now, look at the ENDS label. It states very clearly that ENDS contain 100 milligrams of Daritol chlorophyll, a fully effective dose. That's why only one or two ENDS tablets a day stop triple O. Stop all three odor offenses all day long. O, O, O. Guard against triple O. o, 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 o. But don't expect such long-lasting results against triple O from cheaper chewing gum or candy substitutes that contain so little chlorophyll. Ends are so effective because they start acting instantly inside the body where odors begin. So for pennies a day, you get ends longer-lasting protection. They're pleasant-tasting and safe as any garden vegetable. Get E-N-N-D-S, ends chlorophyll tablets, and be sure you stop triple O. Trial size only 49 cents at drug counters everywhere. Larger sizes, even more economical. <laughs> But Irma's certainly acting strange this morning. She's standing in front of the mirror making faces. She's laughing. <laughs> now she's crying. <laughs> now she's singing. Give my regards to Broadway. Like now she's me. trying to jump over one leg. <laughs> She didn't make it. <laughs> Irma, what in the world are you doing? Please, Jane, don't interfere with my career. 
career? Yeah, wait till Al gets here. You'll find out. Uh, now, please don't interrupt. To be or not to be, that is the answer. <laughs> <laughs> Honey, I've asked you a hundred times, what is this all about? Well, I can't tell you, Jane. You'll find out when Al gets here. What's Al got to do with it? Come in. Hello, Jane. Hi, you chicken. <laughs> well, Jane, did you hear the news? Just break it to me gently. Jane, chicken is gone on the stage. <laughs> oh, no. The two of you are crazy. Uh, don't you be a skeptic, Jane. I tell you, this girl is a natural. There's no telling where the two of us can go. I got an idea. <laughs> <coughs> what is this all about, Irma? Uh, don't talk to me, Jane. Talk to my manager. Manager? Yeah, Al let me sign a contract with him last night A contract with Al? Yes, Jane, and it's perfectly legal It's one of those regular contracts that show people have I get 10% of everything I make <laughs> Now, just a minute, kids Let me get this straight You mean that Irma is really going on the stage? That's right Well, what about her job? Eh, she's quitting it Yes, Jane, you know how I hate that job. Irma Peterson, you'll do no such thing. Listen, Al, Irma's not going to leave her job until she has one to take its place. She's got another job, I tell you. She's on the stage. Doing what? <laughs> oh, you'll see. Well, but Irma, what can you do? Can you sing? No. Can you dance? No. Talk? No. Oh, I know. You're going to balance the ball on the end of your nose. <laughs> Al, I demand to know what she's going to do. Uh, uh, uh well, uh, she's going to do, uh, bit parts. Yeah, and two bits. Be quiet, chicken. <laughs> oh, Al, please let me tell her. No, as your manager, I refuse. And as Irma's roommate, I insist on knowing. Yeah, now, wait a minute, Jane. Irma is making her debut tonight. <laughs> if you want to see her, we'll tell you the time and place, but not until we're ready. Now, if you promise not to interrupt, Chicken and me have business to discuss. Oh, well, by all means, Mr. Ziegfeld. Thank you. Now, uh, first of all, Chicken, Irma Peterson is not a stage name. Gotta have something catchy, glamorous. I always like bubbles. <laughs> no, something with more class. Now, let's see. There was Sarah Bernhardt. Maybe we could switch it around. Yeah, you, you make it Irma Heartburn. Very descriptive. <laughs> Never mind the cracks, Jane. Would like to get something continental, Parisian. You got a French dictionary, chicken? All I have is a bottle of perfume. Oh, let me see it. Here, manager. Yeah. Eau de Cologne. That's kind of classy. <laughs> yeah, and no one could say the act smells. <laughs> Why don't you call yourself hors d'oeuvres? Hors d'oeuvres? Sure, then they couldn't say you're from hunger. Oh. <laughs> well, I can't be a part of this any longer. I'm going out to meet Richard. Uh, Jane, are you coming to my debut? Irma, honey, I don't know what you and your so-called manager are up to, but if you want to make a spectacle of yourself, now don't ask me to have any part of it. Goodbye, kids. Boy, what an envious date. Al, I think we should have told her what I'm doing. No, chicken, she'd only laugh at you. She wouldn't see that this is just a stepping stone to bigger things. Come in. Again, Professor Kropotkin. Oh, my darling, I hear you got a job with the great Cardoni. He's going to saw you in half. Oh, Professor, I'm so excited. I know it's only the beginning, as Al says, but I think the main thing is just getting started in show business. Well, Irma, if you've got theatrical ambitions, all I can say is good luck to you, my darling, and I hope you've killed him at both ends. <laughs> <laughs> On behalf of my protege, thanks, Professor. Hey, maybe you can help us. We're trying to find a theatrical name for Irma. Oh, there are millions, Al. But my favorite is Tamara. Tamara? That don't sound bad. Oh, it's got great exploitation possibilities. Can't you just hear them saying, ladies and gentlemen, today we bring you Tamara. <laughs> yeah, but what'll we do the next day? <laughs> no, Professor, it ain't got enough sock, you know? Sock. I got it. Take an actor with a lot of punch. Pat O'Brien. Huh? They would take a great dramatic actress. Margaret Sullivan. And we got it. Margaret O'Brien. <laughs> well, it didn't come out right. Yeah, well, look, Chicken, we can find a name later. The main thing is for you to make a big hit tonight. Oh, gee, Al, I'm so nervous. Don't be nervous, honey. Come on, we'll stop for the theater. I'm hitching my wagon to you, Chicken. No, Al, I'm 
too tired. Let's just take a trolley. <laughs> Jane, I thought you'd never get here. Well, the traffic was terrible, Richard. Did you get the theater tickets? Oh, that's what I wanted to ask you about. We have a choice of three, uh, The King and I, Top Banana, and Affairs of State. Now, which would you prefer? Well, Jane, what's the matter, honey? Oh, it, it's, it's ridiculous. It's, it's too silly to talk about, Richard. Oh, I see. Well, what about Irma? <laughs> yeah, you guessed it. She's appearing on the stage somewhere tonight. Al wouldn't tell me where. On the stage? Well, does Irma have talent? Talent? Well, all I can tell you about Irma's talent is that I once heard her sing There's an Awful Lot of Coffee in Brazil that kept me awake for nights. <laughs> well, what in the world is she doing on the stage? I don't know, Richard. That's what frightens me. But yet, you know something? I feel kind of guilty. You know, I've always been near her when she needed me, and I've got a feeling tonight it's going to be double in spades. But, Jane, if you don't know where she's appearing, you can't do anything about it. Well, I could call Professor Kropotkin. He would know. Oh, well, why should I? You think I'm fool enough to waste an evening in some broken-down theater? I'm going to sit by and watch Irma Peterson make a fool out of herself? You think I'd do a thing like that? Why, I'd be out of my mind. Well, here I am, out of my mind. (laughs) At the Bijou Theater. How can I describe this place? Well, you know, they say that vaudeville is dead. If that's true, this must be the graveyard. (laughs) Richard and I feel kind of silly, but Richard, bless him, he, he thinks he's at an opening night, and he insists upon being chivalrous. He has a bouquet of flowers in his hand. In this respect, he's a little different from the rest of the audience. They're all carrying vegetables. <laughs> I still don't know what Irma's going to do tonight, and the last act is now going on. And now, ladies and gentlemen, the great Cardone. Thank you. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, for my first trick, I will saw this beautiful blonde woman in half. Oh, Mother, it's Irma. Ladies and gentlemen, your attention, please. Many people think that in doing my famous sawing trick, I do not use a real live person. I give you my word, this young lady is not a dummy. Oh, thank you, sir. <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> And now, ladies and gentlemen, to saw this lady in half. Well, if I ever become a grandmother, this is one story I must never tell my grandchildren. They'd think their old granny is hitting the bottle. (laughs) So help me, it's happening right before my unbelieving eyes. Irma is stretched out in a big black box, her head sticking out of one end, her feet out of the other. And now the great Cardoni is sawing her. Irma's blowing kisses at the audience with her head. Now she's looking at her feet. She wants to see how the other half lives. <laughs> Al, good manager that he is, is standing proudly in the wings with two bathrobes for Irma. One regular length and the other short, just in case trick doesn't work. <laughs> Probably doesn't want her to catch a cold, you know. But Cardoni saws on... Now Irma is giggling. (laughs) Saw must be tickling her. Cardoni is glaring at her. Now I have a strange feeling that if she doesn't stop giggling, Cardoni's going to forget his artistic integrity and really go to work on her. (laughs) Now the trick is finished. Irma is in two parts. The great Cardoni is standing center stage with the saw poised over his head. He speaks. Ladies and gentlemen, for all practical purposes, this woman is a sword in half. She cannot breathe. She cannot move. She cannot speak. That's right, folks. <laughs> well, if that isn't enough to ruin Cardoni's act, Irma has stepped out of the box to take a bow. <laughs> Although I've never seen Cardoni's act before, I'm sure this is a new finish tonight because he's completely forgotten the audience and he's chasing Irma around the stage with the saw. Come on, Richard, come on. One, Irma Peterson, is enough. Two would be a little tough to take. Come on. Yes, here, Jane. We can get through the backstage this way. Hey, just a second, lady. Get out of our way. We're Hmm? friends of the star. Irma? Irma Peterson. Oh, hello, Jane. Oh, Irma, how could you do this? Don't yell at me, Jane. I'm so unhappy. 
I was fired. I didn't think that guy was chasing you with a saw to give you a raise. I know what you're thinking, Jane, but I was so tired of my job, and this looked like such a good way to start, and they all thought... Irma Peterson, you are going to go home, and you're going to write in your little book, I am going to remain a stenographer 500 times. In shorthand? Yes. Jane, what's the good of that? You know I won't be able to read it back. Irma and Jane will be back in a moment. But first, O, O, O. Guard against triple O. And here's amazing news. In a scientific odor test, eight out of ten men and women stopped or definitely reduced triple O. Stopped odor of body. Stopped odor of breath. Stopped offending. Executives, secretaries, clerks, even factory workers at 110 degree heat took ENDS chlorophyll tablets. Results from hundreds and hundreds of examinations were astounding. Working inside the body where odors begin, ENDS actually prevented unpleasing odors from forming. Stopped all three odor offenses. O, O, O. Guard against triple O. Yes, there's scientific proof ENDS really stop triple O. Keep you fresh as a daisy all over all day long you get more complete, longer-lasting protection against triple O than from any old-fashioned body deodorant, toothpaste, soap, mouthwash. And ends are so easy to use and safe as any green vegetable. Pleasant-tasting ends contain 100 milligrams, a fully effective dose of Daritol chlorophyll. So beware of cheaper chewing gum or candy substitutes that contain so little chlorophyll or that fail to state their chlorophyll content on the label. O, O, O. Guard against triple O. Just insist on ENDS chlorophyll tablets. That's E-N-N-D-S. ENDS. Trial size only 49 cents. Larger sizes even more economical. back at her job, I think she's gotten over her stage ambitions, but I haven't gotten over the way she lets Al get her into these things. Irma. What is it, Jane? I want to know one thing. How could you have volunteered for such a dangerous job? What if the saw had slipped? Oh, I was protected. Al took out double indemnity so he could collect from both ends. <laughs> You can saw it in half, but no matter how you slice it, it's still my friend, Irma. <laughs> my Friend Irma is a Cy Howard production and is directed by Park Levy, who writes the script of Stanley Adams. Pat Burton is associate producer. Marie Wilson has starred as Irma and Kathy Lewis as Jane. The part of Al was played by John Brown. Hans Conrad was heard as Professor Kropotkin and Life Erickson as Richard. Music was under the direction of Lud Gluskin. Tired-looking eyes can ruin your appearance, make you look unattractive, dull. So don't take chances when eyes are red, weary from lack of sleep, glare, driving. Get Igene. Two soothing drops in each eye float away that tired eye feeling at once. Igene is like a prescription. Contains Lexitol. Acts as a tonic for the eyes. Safe, gentle, too. Get Igene. E-Y-E-G-E-N-E tonight. Use it daily for bright, attractive eyes. Trial size only 25 cents. Larger sizes even more economical. Hygiene at drug counters everywhere. Be with us next Sunday at this time when ENDS, America's most popular chlorophyll tablets, again bring you My Friend Irma. Carl Caruso speaking. Now stay tuned for our Miss Brooks starring Eve Arden, which follows immediately on most of these same CBS stations. My friend Irma was transcribed. This is the CBS Radio Network.